Like many of the periods we study, um, the post-classical period can get a little confusing in terms of maintaining the big picture as we look at the different details and the different pieces um, uh, in different areas of the world and times. So let's just step back a minute and look at some of the things that really, really influence the development of states, cultures, uh, trade routes. Um, and I'm going to start with this guy right here, the camel. So the camel is really important um, because this, along with the saddle you see there, um, and, and saddles like it, um, it allows people to trade uh, longer distances through dry, arid, uh, desert conditions like in, in North Africa and other parts of uh, Southwest Asia. This also um, is a particular type of camel. This is a dromedary camel. Uh, this camel right here is the Bactrian camel. Um, now, it's significant because these are examples of people interacting with the environment, uh, changing the environment, uh, through breeding in this case. They also had hybrid camels um, were, that were larger and stronger and could go longer distances. Um, so we were, we were trying to establish uh, you know, domestication of these animals um, as a way to do more with what we have. So we were going to take camels that could go farther and they could they could go farther on less water um, and use them to breed and make better camels. Um, this leads to um, establishment of the caliphate. The caliphate is an Islamic state. It's based on Islamism, which is diff different than Islam. Islamism, as John Green in his new video explains, is based on um, governance, uh, by religious leaders. So this is the Abbasid Caliphate. Um, their capital city was in Baghdad, as opposed to the earlier Umayyad Caliphate, um, which had a, uh, a uh, capital city in Damascus in Syria. Um, the Abbasids, they're known for, for, for ushering in the golden age of, uh, of the Caliphate, um, in, in particular, Baghdad was really significant for its, um, for its, its scholarship, um, as well as its, uh, um, you know, museums and, um, institutions that, that they provided for merchants and traders to attract them, to, to want people to come there and do business. This is the Viking longship. The Vikings were major, uh, traders, raiders, um, invaders, as they say, um, and the longship is how they do this. Now, they had other designs, but we're just going to look at this one for now. Um, many of the designs uh, with, of all the Viking ships ships and boats um, were very similar in that they had they were very much seaworthy. You could, you could take these to the open ocean, the open water, right? Um, but they're also really, because of their flat bottom and shallow draft, the amount of the actual boat that, you know, goes below the water level, um, was really handy in in terms of um you know sneaking up those um uh, european northern european and eastern european uh, rivers and creeks so that they could go ashore without the need of like a, a harbor or port right go ashore um and raid take what they needed or do the business that they needed to do move in their armies really quickly and then get out so this was kind of a significant technology um that helped the Vikings take over many, many areas. Um, here's uh, uh, 21 different key areas that the Vikings um, were able to take control of or have a major influence over the governance and culture in these areas. The horse. The horse from Central Asian steppes, um, those, those, uh, those grassy highlands, plateaus, right, the steppes, um, this is really significant. Now, in the post-classical, we're going to look at uh, the Khanates. The Khanates were systems of government um, set up by the Mongols as they invaded um, from uh, east and west, really, pretty much everywhere, taking over over China with the establishment of the Yuan dynasty, taking over uh, uh, former Persian lands, um, and even going into uh, into Russia, not really taking it over, but but controlling them enough so that you know they could at least get taxes and, and tribute, right? Um, they do this 
because they have horses. They have horses that move really well. They move quickly. They're a horse breeding culture. It's been happening in this area, the the, the world, um, you know, as long as agriculture had been happening in other areas. So it's been thousands and thousands of years in the making. And here comes, you know, uh, uh, Genghis Khan with 50,000 um, well-trained uh, horsemen who have been by by well trained I mean they've been riding you know hands free since they were three or four you know that they're they're very well trained they know how to uh, take care of the horses and they know how to fight with the horses um, so they're able to uh, you know make it from village to village city to city before word of them coming even makes it so they have the stealth they have you know um, the sneak attack and they're able to get in and get out. Um, they establish uh, security along the Silk Roads, which is great for trade between the East and the West. This is really, really good for the world. And we usher in what we call um, the Pax Mongolia, this uh, long-term peace brought on by the Mongol conquests. They lived in yurts, kind of like the one you see here in this, uh, this image. Um, and uh, like I said, these are the people um, from the Asian steppes. This is the, the empire um, at 1200. Um, as you can see, it moves up into Europe in, as far as, as Russia. Um, and it goes in and establishes um, in East Asia and Southeast Asia, establishes the Yuan dynasty. Um, the Khanates were broken up into, into four major Khanates. Um, the, uh, the Golden Horde, the Il Khanate. Um, and then, like I said, the uh, the major uh, Khanate in East Asia was y the Yuan Dynasty, which was still Chinese culture. I mean, the Mongols loved Chinese culture, as did everybody. Um, even when the Manchur Manchurians took over, they didn't replace Chinese culture with Manchurian culture. You know, um, to be able to take China was a big deal. To be able to take China meant they had like infinite resources. You know, China was. The envy of the ancient world, don't forget.